Yes, you can only hear the game because I left myself muted. What a great start! Delightful! All of my gestures have absolutely no sound going with them. I've been doing this for quite some time. This is why I'm glad I have the chat window. <laughs> okay. So, to recap my rambling that was obviously not heard by... Um... <laughs> by the masses just then. It is Easter Monday. We are 72 hours thereabouts away from the release of Oddworld Soulstorm. Yep. One of my favorite childhood games reimagined as it was in originally envisioned instead of, you know, what was done in nine months by the talented Oddworld Inhabitants team. And that of course means the Countdown to Soulstorm label I've been using for a lot of my projects and videos I can no longer use. So, that means I've had to do a little bit of relabeling of things. But it also now means I have a generic layout that I can use across the franchise for projects like this. Tonight, I spent a decent amount of time editing what is probably going to be the last Countdown to Soulstorm episode. The last of my attempts at the One Life Challenge. From this point onwards, one attempt of each game every month. Give or take on Munch's Odyssey, we'll get onto that later. Alright, one life challenge run for April. We need Hilo, Chant, Stop it. Stop it. That is the wrong button. Hilo, Chant, Stop it. Stop it. Sorry. But. Alright, let's hit the show on the road. So, Current standing for this, I've replaced my third run from the February with the first recorded run I have, which was from March. That is the standard I now need to beat. It'd be lovely if tonight we can get to disc two, but I'm going to be realistic in terms of still. This still three for weight, right? Let's just double check when we get there. Wait. Okay. Thank you. Okay. That is not the roll button. I am indeed live. Okay, come on, Mudokin. Good. I am not going to be ending this run in the first secret passage. I don't want to do this to myself. We already did that last month. Not in the mood. We are either matching that 77 from my first attempt, or we are just bypassing it. We're getting to this too. We're gonna do this. But once I've got through this first secret passage, I'll start talking about some of the other stuff. Just because I don't know how easily I can multitask this section and that. And I got a bit of buffer time going through the rest of it. So we'll see how we go. Cool. Alright. If you can go to a different work wheel, that'd be. Mmm. You pair of dingbats. If you have a. There we go. One, two, three. Perfect. Alright, let's sort out this, the last bit of this first secret passage. And then I'll get on to the other stuff. Perfect. Awesome. <sighs> 12 is a good buffer for whether or not getting distracted by conversation is the thing to jump on immediately. Okay, good. <laughs> the first two minute buffer of the run is going well. But nevertheless, yes, with the onset of Soulstorm coming up literally this week, it's setting up a pretty solid precedence of I've really got to now think about how I'm going to be doing the rest of the Oddworld content, not only just on Twitch, on YouTube, just in general. Because I recorded Exodus back in 2012. And then I recorded Old World Adventures 2 a year later, in 2013. 
Then 2016, I did an easy mode run of Oddworld Adventures 2. Sorry. And then after that, I did new and tasty overlapping that easy mode run. And then into um, the next three years, give or take, with stuff. The thing I've really got to focus on now is that is a lot of buffer time where I've clearly been avoiding okay. one game in particular. And I am, of course, referring to Munch's Odyssey. I love Munch's Odyssey, but as an undertaking, it is a game that is huge. I have attempted to try recording it already a couple of times, and even on this more beastly computer... Nope! That is the wrong button! Sorry. Okay. Uh, it's... it That one. I was saying something important of plans and Munch and Odyssey. Uh, yeah, Munch and Odyssey. I've tried, um, recording it before, and, uh... I think the safest thing to say is the files were bulky. And I'm not just talking about on my Windows 7 machine, I'm even talking about on my current Windows 10 gaming PC. The files were bulky. It was huge. I did a test recording of the Hydra Bats. So I think that's about the fourth level of the entirety of Munch's Odyssey. The footage was huge. That in itself, the size of that video was two-thirds the size of all of the archived footage that I have for the Rayman Redemption playthrough that I am currently editing. Munch's Odyssey is huge. I do not have a dedicated hard drive I can put all of that onto, and that is... <laughs> that kind of stops me from doing that in a conventional sense. So I'm thinking, going forward, I don't want to jump into Soulstorm before I've done Munch's Odyssey. And the reason for that is that Soulstorm is effectively going to be changing the way, potentially, that the canonical story of the Oddworld franchise continues from this point onwards. There are things from Exodus that are potentially going to be retconned by Soulstorm, meaning that Effectively, we have a different timeline going on with the current four games that Soulstorm might dispute. And my attitude is... I kind of want to address that first, because Munch's Odyssey is a great game, and I don't know what the overlap's going to be with the content in Soulstorm. So what I'm actually thinking of doing, because I've been playing around with how things archive on Twitch and move across to YouTube, what I'm thinking of doing, once I've sorted out all my other main projects, so like the Booze Fury videos I'm working on, Rayman Redemption by extension, and then anything else that I've got bookmarked after that, so stuff on the LP League for example, what I'm thinking I might try doing is Approaching Munch's Odyssey the way I would with any other Let's Play, but doing it here on Twitch. And the main reason for that is because the way Twitch archives videos, I can work with that and move them across to YouTube in more sizable chunks that I can edit later. Even doing highlight reels from these couple of streams for the last month and a half, that has been proving to be a very helpful thing. It means instead of downloading a 12 gigabyte file from Twitch that may crash about a million and one times in the process, it gets condensed into a two gigabyte file without too much loss of quality. And that I can really solidly work with. Um, Zed, that's the one I want. Today, please. So yeah, tangent aside, before I even consider recording Old World Soulstorm, even as a first impressions thing, I want to do Munch's Odyssey first. And when I say Munch's Odyssey, I actually mean both versions. Because again, Munch Game Boy Advance is Oddworld Adventures 3. That in itself is part of a trilogy that I don't want to leave open-ended, so... Yes, that does indeed mean that in the timeline of the way I am handling the Oddworld franchise, I'm going to be recording both versions of Munch's Odyssey before I start recording Soulstorm. Please forgive me. 
It is it is a bizarre choice. I realize that. I de very much realize that. But I've been putting off Munch's Odyssey since 2012, effectively. This has got to stop. It's a good game, and now I have four different versions of it. I reckon four different versions. Three different versions. Four if you count the Game Boy Advance version. Point being. I have a lot of different versions of Munch's Odyssey I can now record. <laughs> there are no longer any excuses. The initial trilogy of Oddworld games needs to be recorded on my channel, and what better a time to do it than to avoid putting off Soulstorm. So that is going to be one thing I'm going to be looking into over the coming months, is working out how I'm going to record Munch's Odyssey and doing that here on Twitch. It's not going to be too crazy, and I will not pretend that I know much as Odyssey anywhere near as well as I know Odyssey or Exodus for A. It's, it's no question of it. I didn't grow up with an Xbox, so I started learning about much as Odyssey in 2010 when the Oddbox came out. No, it would have been 2000. Late Christmas present probably counts. Point being. Munch's Odyssey is not my strong point, and I feel like to get it done in a more timely manner, the best way of doing it is to do it here on Twitch. So if anyone was expecting me to be jumping on Soulstorm content literally next week, I hate to break it to you, sadly, no, that is not going to happen. And that is part of the other reason why I took Soulstorm out of the header for my banner, is because I feel like it would be false information. The last video I'm going to have with Countdown to Soulstorm in the title is going to be, um... The next two clips of One Life Challenge going on YouTube. After that, it's going to be a bit of a wait. But I don't know! If Rayman Redemption goes pretty smoothly and I get that all edited really quickly, I might even start recording that fairly soon. And then if I get through Munch's Odyssey pretty quickly, goodness knows. You might see me start recording Soulstorm before the end of the year. Dedicating a Monday um, bracket to a little bit of streaming has actually helped me build up a little bit of a backlog of content, which is kind of good. I'm still working on how I'm going to um, work around editing the Mario 35 and Mario Maker videos. And that definitely promises to be fun. Anyways, Tunnel 2. Let's not go down the bottomless pit. But yeah, so... Tonight, I want to try and do a little bit of everything, all depending on how things go. If I have a stream that goes as well as that very first uh, batch of three runs of Exodus, I may actually not end up doing all three games I have in mind. I might only end up doing Exodus and maybe Odyssey. Because again, the third game I was thinking of doing was new and tasty. I did kind of- oop, hang on. Hang on a minute. Yeah, I thought it was 31. Golly, hit the button. Yeah, I did kind of consider doing much, but not ready. Because again, I haven't even done the playthrough of the game, and I think that in itself is a sign enough of how much I um am not as familiar with that game. The other thing I am kind of thinking of doing, just for the heck of it, is maybe speedrunning some of the Game Boy games. Maybe. I do kind of want to set up a speedrun setup for that kind of thing. I do not believe I am the kind of person who could reliably speedrun new and tasty, but I'm willing to give it a shot, definitely. That might be something down the pipe as well. But I want to kind of see if I can get a world record for any of the Oddworld Adventures games. That is something I'd like to play around with, because I know, for example, Oddworld Adventures 1, I don't know how fast I could do it glitchless, but I am pretty sure I could beat that game in 20 minutes as a glitched run, if I was abusing glitches. I'd be curious to see what the world record is glitchless and see if I can beat that, just as a little side project. Because One Life, a category doesn't exist for the handheld games, because not enough people are interested in it, to the best of my understanding. But two of those three games, you can actually run One Life. Again, Oddworld Adventures 1 does not have Mudokas. Doesn't stop me from speedrunning it, so that could be something to look into. 
But point is, there are ways I can do more odd world content here, and one of the major ones is finally doing Lunch's Odyssey. After that, seeing if there's anything I can bring to the speedrunning side of things. Let me just double check that. The article. But yeah, it's it's just fun ways to keep Old World going as content on the channel and with I don't know, my brand, if you could call it my brand. Point being, Old World is kind of mixed in there and I want to keep that as an ongoing thing. I don't want it to be a case of I've recorded all of the games on my main channel and then they just sort of sit in limbo as conversation pieces. That doesn't seem fair. Okay. Cool, cool, cool beans. Cool, 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 cool beans. I cool, 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 cool beans. I cool, 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 cool beans. All right, that is that. You know, compared to some of the other runs I've done of this game on the One Life Challenge, this is actually going really well for Tunnel 2. And that in itself is showing that I am learning these games better than I thought I did. And that's 35, 6, 7, 8. Okay, now before I forget, I'm just going to also say, if at any point this doesn't seem to be your cup of tea, I did want to say... Feel free to check out my friend, that guy Ange. Um, he's also an Aussie streamer. Good friend of a friend of a friend of a friend of mine. Now, to be fair, I've met him a couple of times. I know him pretty well. And he is currently streaming Sea of Thieves. If that is your cup of tea or you want to just swing by, say hello, tell him that Sax Dude sent you, feel free to. He is a, he is a barrel of laughs, and I'm definitely sure he would appreciate the views. But yeah. He and I stream at the same time, especially on Mondays, so I always feel bad that I only catch the tail end of his stream. So I figured I'd just plug him there because he's been a solid support to the channel and he deserves the shout out. Definitely. But regardless, continuing with Old World shenanigans. Okay, um, get the timing right, boom, 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 boom. Ah, no, I've got to... Oh good, let's get these slugs under control. Oh boy! No! Okay! 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 We can work with this. That nearly ended terribly. Vroom. Running, 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 running! I think that's all the slugs. It's hard to tell when the music's still going. Gotta love the PC version and not being chill. But yes. I'm getting a really good vibe now for Necromines that I didn't originally have now that I've been doing it this way. And it's kind of cool because it's showing me there are a lot of ways I played this game that really could have been better for timing. And that's really nice because, oh, good golly. There we go. You always think you know a game 10 years down the track, but turns out, yeah, I <laughs> I have barely scratched the surface with Abe's Exodus. Heck, I feel like I've still only just scratched the surface with Abe's Odyssey, and I'm not fooling anyone, I definitely have only scratched the surface with New and Tasty. So, finding ways to get better at those games, I'll take it, thank you very much. Ugh. Could, could, could you, there we go. Uh, that one? There we go. Okay. Um, dit, dit, dit. Boom, boom, boom. Follow me. Okay. Okay. Wait. Okay. Okay. Go. 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 Wait. Okay. Follow me. Okay. Okay. Wait. Okay. Follow me. Okay. Alright, now that we got the landmine out of the way, this is going to make this bit just a nice slip, trip, and wah. Okay. Wait. 
Okay, on would we go? Boing, 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 boing. And a one, and a two, and a three. Awesome. That still gets me every time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Perfect. I'm also really, really liking this setup now because, unfortunately, as I learned last time I did the run, um, especially, um, not especially, just the March run in general, I did hit a casualty rather than hitting my personal best of 77. Now I actually have a ticker dedicated to casualties, which is good. That means now I can properly, accurately document everything going on with personal bests. And I think that's especially good for keeping this kind of content on my channel as accurate as possible. Also, it means there's a little bit more structure in it as well. And that was a wasted rock. Why you do? Um, yeah. Also, I do need to give a special shout out to my friend Jared, who literally started following just before this stream started, and constantly tells me after my stream's finished that he feels bad that he can't always, um, duck in and say hi and all that stuff. But, yeah, he, um, he hit the follow button and said he was gonna keep a tab muted and minimized while he was doing his raids just to show his support, and I really do appreciate that, mate. Thank you very much. But, yeah. Glad to know that you are looking around at the speed of raid. Got places to go, got something in the background. Okay. Um. Boom, 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 boom. Could, could you is? Awesome. And, yep. Three in one hit. Thank you. That is what I like to see. Not quite as splashy, but still good. Okay. Uh, Abe. Why for you do the thing that you... That wasn't even the one I thought I hit. That was dumb and a half. But I'll take it. I will take it. That was fun. That was very much the fun. Okay. Uh, yep. Uh, Abe. Throw, please. Throw, please. Throw, please. How? I am skeptical of your throwing arc, mister. When in doubt, miss with eight rocks. <laughs> that is how we keep things fresh. Okay, sure. I have no idea which bombs I've actually hit, and this is a nice reminder that I am not ready to speedrun this game. But I can do that at least, so it's something for what it's worth. Alright, get the Mudok on, bring him over here, thank you very much. Hi! You will be. Well, we'll okay. In the wall. Thank you. Boom. Alright, on to tunnel four. Tunnel four, tunnel four. Tunnel four, tunnel four, tunnel four, four, four. Okay. One. Could, could, could we please not done? That sounds great. Thank you very much. Awesome. And then. Let's do this properly this time, and not at once leave this Mudokan behind and do the silly. As I keep learning, that is not the way to go. Hi. You will follow me. Okay. Implementing the buddy system, cause I really don't want to walk to the end of this area and leave him behind, so we'll keep going. 
Oh yes, for those of you in the audience who haven't been to one of my streams before or watched many of my videos, yes, me bursting into song randomly is a thing. You have been advised. That was actually kind of funny considering I was catching up with one of my friends the other day and I started doing it while playing Mario Kart and she's just gone, I did not realize we were playing... I did not realize we were playing Warriors Minds the Musical. <laughs> Which, to be fair as a concept, is something that sounds freaking hilarious to me. <laughs> so, that was that was a funny sentence to hear. So yeah, that's um hmm. Wait. Alrighty, so that should put us at 49. Awesome. And as I have been learning, doing the right hand side jump, not worth it because it sours. And I'm really not in the mood to go for blue popcorn, so let's try and keep things as consistent as possible. Yep. Okay. Yep. I'm still amazed the spacing is so good for that jump. Okay. Wait. 50, 51. Okay. I'm actually starting to get a really nice rhythm with that, and that's the thing. Abe's Odyssey and Abe's Exodus I have great rhythm with, but I think especially when I start doing this challenge for New and Tasty, it's going to be a very clear indicator that rhythm, music, and I don't know, any other pronouns or adjectives you want to throw into that, and whatever else anything okay. could ask for, anyone could, any, who could ask for any... I had a meme going there and it fell apart. Okay. Point is, New and Tasty's timing with so many things is something that I am still to this day growing accustomed to. I started recording it the day it came out. I am far from being a master of it. So, uh, yeah, that's gonna be interesting to do one night. We'll see how that goes, I guess. Hi, you will be. Okay. Wait, work. Okay. Bubble. Hi, you will be. Okay. Wait. Okay. Okay. Now to sort out the rest of Final 5, ladies and gentlemen, and those of unspecified orientation? I'm trying to think of the right word. Never mind. Regardless, I butchered the Team 4 stuff, boy. That's the that was the point I was making. Anyways, um Tunnel 5. I'm really good with the timing of this now. At least I feel like I am. Getting something resembling a sense of consistency. It's nice. I really am, am enjoying it. Cool. That's down now, which means I can go up here. Sort out this one, and this one, and this one. That's one thing I'm going to be curious about, is doing Abe's Odyssey one line. Okay. But I am very interested to see how it goes, because I think, unlike Necromines, I do not have quite the confidence in myself to consistently do all of Zulag 1 in Rupture Farms 1. I am not quite at that stage yet. I do believe that means that my very first One Life run of Abe's Odyssey is going to... Wait. I... 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 derailed myself there. Yeah, my first run of Abe's Odyssey is probably... going to have a couple of casualties, because I won't go to every secret passage. It's something I can strive for. But I don't quite think I'm there yet. But it's something to work towards, and I think that is, that's kind of exciting. The idea of playing Abe's Odyssey, knowing full well that not only if I muck up a secret passage I lose the Mudokans, but also 
that's a casualty that either way is added to my total, and also could potentially be run ending. That's kind of terrifying, but also there's a bit of adrenaline to that as well, and I do like the premise of playing the game that way. Because it's not too different to how you normally play Odyssey, but it's got the extra, you know, sense of challenge to it. And I like the idea of that. Alright. We mucked this up once, we're not gonna do it again. Thank you. Yep. Boom, boom, do, do, do. Ooh, I'm surprised that counted. Not gonna quite risk it just yet. And a one, and a two. And a one, and a two, and a let's go, yay! Blow you up as you come into the screen. I thought that the slick disappeared last time I did this challenge. Turns out, I just blew him up the second he came into the screen. There you go. Okay. Now that we're on the floor. A one, a two, a three! So far, so good! Awesome. Okay. Okay, cool beans. Hi, you will follow me. Cool boy. You go over Wait. there. Okay. Awesome. I'm more comfortable with that. Awesome. Alrighty. Alright, once they pass me, I'm just gonna go kill the Sleeg and then we should be good to go. Thank you. You guys are going that way. Four beans. Thank you. Awesome. Oops. We are having a good time. Oops. Yeah, there we go. Far less stressful. That's what we like to see. 62, 3, 4. Perfect. Alright. Let the adventure continue. Awesome. There. Gonna do this bit. There we go. I just I don't I don't wanna risk it anymore, I think. Fantastic. This is the tricky business. Alrighty. So all I gotta do now is just creep over the new XP. Wait for the slig. Done. Awesome! So far so good! 
That's three more. One, two, three. Seventy-one. This is so great. Mr. Wraith Hat. Wonder why Abe is the only one of his kind who can summon portals. That actually... I had a massive discussion about this in my Let's Play of New and Tasty as a follow-on conversation from something I brought up with one of my mates outside of videos. When Abe dies in the first game, he full-on canonically dies. If you treat every death and every possession and every time he chants in-game up to that point as just gameplay and not plot, Abe canonically dies before he reaches Mosaic Lines. When he's resurrected, he's been granted native powers by Big Face. So he is an escaped scrub who can now chant like a native. And that's why he can open portals, and that's kind of why all the tutorials in Mosaic Lions are telling you things that you've been doing for the last, you know, hours worth of gameplay, is because, yes, they may not be new things to you as the player, but to Abe, he's still learning this stuff. He's been nothing but a floor waxer for his whole life, and his only goal was to, to escape, to get out. So, part of the reason why Abe is the only one is because, you know, he had to die for it. It would be way more fun if he summoned the portals with his f- <laughs> Oh, but if he summoned the portals with his farts, how would he possess the f- Although... No, I shouldn't think about that too hard. That's- that's- that's getting into weird territory, goodness knows. <laughs> but I mean, hey... There's probably a theory about it somewhere out there. Anywho, I think the one thing I'm really curious about in Soulstorm is going to be seeing just how much the crafting system, because by extension it has brew bottles in it used with explosives or with, you know, like glue or blue tech or whatever the, the gooey stuff is. I'd be interested to see how much of the old Soulstorm brew system is retained in, so in well, Soulstorm. Whether we're going to get back the possession of farts again, whether there's going to be explosive farts, or... Well, I didn't need the rocks anyway. Um... You're facing the wrong way, where are you go? Okay, cool. Yep, that works, that works, that works! Yay! Speaking of new and tasty, my goodness, if the game wasn't already hard on it... <laughs> it has its days. It has its days. Ah, 75. See, that's the weird thing. Because I didn't have a PS4 when it came out, and by extension didn't have a PS3, I started on the PC version. Cool beans, thanks for letting me know, game. But yeah, no, I, I will admit, I was very used to Odyssey's control scheme when I first played New and Tasty, so I did kind of miss the whole shoulder button and game speak setup, but I adjusted in time. And to be fair, I feel like the way New and Tasty does game speak is, um, still a lot more manageable compared to the way Odyssey and Exodus do it on PC. Having all the game speak up here. On a oh, somehow managed to play through New and Tasty on phone. Props. Props, props. I did actually consider getting a, um, an Android compatible game, um, game controller, like the ones with the grip on top and trying to play it with that, and I might still chase one of those down for when I do the Android footage for Munch's Odyssey, which I'm now thinking Munch's Odyssey is in the pipeline to be on Twitch first, then YouTube, rather than the other way around, because my goodness, I do not have a dedicated hard drive space either built into the PC or on hand to put all of that hard drive stuff on. And simply recording the Hydravats was enough to be bigger than my Rayman Redemption playthrough. And that couldn't fit on my hard drive. When it was the only raw footage on my hard drive. Which is nuts. <laughs> also, howdy, Murky! Thank you for joining in the complete and total chaos. We just made it through my... Uh, ne Necromines. Point being. 75. Keeping up a good... Keeping up a good pace, as it is. Maybe I should do that. Maybe I should just do like chapters based on which version and just switch between console version. Kind of like some people have done for 
other playthroughs of games where they can do that and just go console by console, level by level. And I know! I don't really want to do what Clement J642 did for Sonic Lost World because he complained about both, both versions through the whole playthrough, so I mean, that doesn't seem fair for Munch's Odyssey. But it is something to look into, that could be fun. Anywho, Necrom. And I'm still not comfortable enough with the idea of doing the first secret passage, so yes. While it is much easier than the other one, and literally anything in Mudanchi, for me at least, for, for a lot of people at least, I am not ready yet to factor it into the One Life Challenge. That'll be something I try and backtrack for once I can get to disc 2. I... And when I know I can do that reliably, I'm also going to try doing, um... Some more of the secret passages in Mudanchi, actually. The one with the saws and the scrab and the cage and the four Mudokins is possible. Redesigned your... Now, Murky, I wouldn't say I redesigned your logo. I'd say what I actually did was I used the font that's used for Oddworld games, and then I took the heart container icon from... Link's Awakening, put it into Photoshop, made the borders for it look a little more bronze, and then I made that an impromptu logo instead. So I didn't technically redesign your logo, I just sort of threw one together? Also, I was struggling really hard to find a clean one of the original, and I, I do my backgrounds weird, so I wasn't sure if it clashed or not. And I've been playing around with this layout way too much, and I, I don't know. It is not that I am dissing your logo in any respects. I do... I demand royalties. Oh yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Royalties. We can do royalties. Absolutely. Let's, um, let's, let's put it in the raw now and then we'll get back to the gameplay. Just letting everyone know, for their viewing pleasure, that the One Life Challenge logo is brought to you by Murky. Because he is talented with graphics, and my goodness, he makes me look like a novice with Photoshop. Thank you for listening to this PSA. Right, getting back to Abe's Exodus. <laughs> and because I will be moving all of this stuff to YouTube in one fell swoop, there'll be no editing that'll be as shonky as it looked on Twitch just now, so look forward to that. Anyways, this is why I do this stuff, so I can make stupid stuff. I'm still thinking of putting in a soundboard to put in a rim shot, but I... I... I, I I don't know, I feel like it's gonna be inorganic. I might do it later down the track. I'm still working that out. Migrating stuff from Twitch to YouTube is a, is a learning process. And there are learning pains involved with it. Much learning, definitely much pain. So we'll see how we go. But um... I can definitely say the uh... The inherent fear that I had of Fleeches growing up is, it's definitely not gone, but I don't feel quite as hesitant now as I used to. Which is something you can even see in my Aves Exodus playthrough from 2012. I feel like the one life challenge has kind of forced me to tackle them head on, and I have an unnerving feeling, if Fleeches are in Soulstorm, I'm going to need that. No ifs, no buts, no coconuts. Is this my first One Life Challenge? No. Mm. This is the first game I've done One Life Challenge for, but this is technically my first, my second verified run. I did my first verified run last month, and I've technically attempted it for this game seven times. But, uh... Three of those runs I don't like to talk about, because my goodness, they were terrible. So, if we don't count the ones that I haven't put on leaderboards and weren't good enough to really shape up as personal bests, this is technically my third serious One Life run. Because the only other one was the one I did in February that was before I joined the Discord and the only difference compared to my um, personal best record there is one. And that is my earphone dying. Not very helpful when I'm trying really hard to listen to noises. Okay. Nope, 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 nope. None of your nonsense. 
Nah, 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 it's all good. Oh, by all means, if that means you didn't hear the answer to the question, I'm more than happy to repeat it. <laughs> Best Exodus score at the moment is the one recorded on screen. The only difference is when I attempted it the third time in February, I managed to get one better and that casualty was saved instead. Um, where I died last month was where I nearly died the month before. So... My goal is still to try and actually beat Mudanchi after doing Mudomo. That is my main goal, not to die in the Mudanchi Ender. Which, you know, should be fairly possible, provided that I don't run onto the teleporter while a scrub is standing on top of it. That is what killed me the first time I nearly made it to Disc 2. Didn't get that far in the second one, unfortunately. Um, still died in the trial rooms. But, uh... It at least means I can consistently make it about three quarters of the way through disc one on the one life challenge, which, to be fair, for a game that I have been, that I have owned and played since the tender age of nine, I'm pretty comfortable with, honestly. I will admit that I am way more liberal with quick save than I probably should be, but this kind of challenge is going to help curb that a little bit, for better or worse. I think. Just, just don't be a noob and you'll be fine. Is this mic on? <laughs> yes, Cosmo vs. Goku. This mic is on. Three quarters of the way through, uh, not three quarters of the way through the game, three quarters of the way through disc one. So, up to this point, then beating Mudomo and getting to the ender of Mudanchi. I can consistently get to Mudanchi. I know that much. Provided I don't die in tunnel one. And I wish that it wasn't always Tunnel 1, but it's either Tunnel 1, um, the, the Boiler Axis first run with the slogs, or dying very stupidly by um, walking into a motion detector and then nearly standing on a UXB in Tunnel 6. So, uh, yeah. I don't know if I can really count those ones, but yeah, getting to Mudanchi Ender is sort of the ballpark I need beat now. Yes, I did indeed make you a mod, Cosmo vs. Goku. I did it literally two hours ago. You didn't do the secret at the start of Necrom? No, I did not. And the main reason for that is that while out of the two in Necrom, it is the easier. And while it's not necessarily one of the harder secret passages in Disc 1, I do not trust my own sense of calm to do it reliably yet. So at the moment, I am treating the one secret passage that doesn't have leeches in Udomo as the only other secret passage I'm going to be doing until the end of Disc 1. That is where my heart rate is of a palpitation that doesn't make me do the stupid, for now. But it is definitely something I can go back and fix later down the track. So, yeah. It is something I can come back to. You scared you'll get... No, I'm scared I'll get derpy hands. I'm... I'm scared I'll get der... That was a sentence, ladies and gentlemen, and those of unspecified gender. I'm afraid I'll get derpy hands. Which, like, is like when you've been playing every couple of Mario Kart and your hands start to go numb. Except instead, um, you throw the controller halfway across the room and you're still attached to it. But that is derpy hands. Okay. But yeah, so there's only one other secret passage that I'm at a level where I feel comfortable enough that I think I can reliably do it for one life. I definitely think the next thing to do is one of the... How many are there? There's, what, three secret passages in Red Edge? Hang on. One, two, three. Yep, there's one secret passage I trust myself to do reliably in Mudanchi. That'd be the next one to ease... No, actually, the Necrom one would be the one to ease in next. And then after that would be the one in... Mudanchi. I think it's basically a case of if the secret passage doesn't have fleeches, I feel comfortable. Point being, 
I'm not quite at that level yet. I'm getting there. I'm not dead yet. I'm getting better. Words to live by. Yes, I am indeed an Aussie. Great mate and or potentially wolf. <laughs> Can I speed run the one life and get a world record? You know what? That'd be awfully tempting because, I mean, an any percent run would technically still give me the potential to adhere to one life rules. Because ideally, avoiding quick save altogether is most beneficial. And I'm pretty, like, I would not be surprised if the world record is also a one life run. Oh! Crud biscuits! Well then. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! Good golly, Miss Molly. <laughs> oh no, that was not what I was hoping for. Well, it is a good thing I had backup plans for this stream because, um, yeah, we're, uh, we're not making it to Mudanshi today, I don't think. 